and ladies and gentlemen of the House. Um, today we have gathered here for a policy debate on the motion. This house would require all Korean students to learn a third language. As the first speaker of the proposition team, I felt the responsibility of briefly going over some definitions, and I will inform you guys of the agreements that we have made with the opposition team prior to the debate. Okay. Um, we are going to limit this motion to the Korean students within the borders of South Korea. Okay, now, um, to go on with the definitions. In Korea, um, as you all know, as you all know, compulsory education, which is mandatory, consists of the elementary school and middle school, and high school isn't part of your compulsory education. And um, so you want to say um, the word require in this motion means that the students are to learn a third language as part of their compulsory education because there could be like, you know, high school drops out, dropouts and stuff. So require means that it's going to be part of um, that, um, that third language classes are going to be part of the elementary school and middle school programs. Okay? And a third language, in the case of Korean students, could probably be generalized to the language they learn other than Korean and English because, as you all may know, the status quo is that of Korean is just your native language, and English is already mandatory from your compulsory education. So then a third language would be other than that. Okay, so moving on. So what is our policy and why do we need one? I, as the first speaker, will present you with the policy itself and to give two good reasons why this change is absolutely necessary. Then I will be followed by my second speaker, Hitek, who will give two more reasons why this policy is necessary. The policy that we propose today will make a third language class part of the normal education for all schools in South Korea, beginning from grade one. Um, uh, uh, in the same way that English is done, right? So third language classes are already part of the school curriculum in all Korean high schools. Like we already have um, Chinese classes and Spanish, Spanish classes. And um, even in like the public schools, they have third language classes. Um, but it is undoubtedly far from being effective, especially in the public schools. So students are not that enthusiastic about learning a whole new, langu whole new language once they reach a certain age. So we must provide students with the opportunity to expand their knowledge um, wh while they are still energetic and enthusiastic about learning new things, which is when they're in first grade. So the third language will be taught without putting too much, if any, pressure on the students without, with our policy. And opponents may say that this is requiring too much from young students. However, if we teach a third language to them slowly, the way English is taught, um, in elementary schools with like flashcards, ABCD, like the, the songs and stuff. Um, children can just take it all in without too much pressure and taking it slowly and gradually in, in after nine years of compulsory education, um, compulsory education of learning a third language, children cannot help but be reasonably fluent at a third language. So now I will go on with the reasons why this flawless policy should be passed. Firstly, early childhood is physiologically the best time to learn a third language. Once a student reaches high school, not only are they not as passionate about learning new things, it is a scientifically proven fact that children at a young age are more capable of absorbing the information that is given to them. Scientists and experts believe that the brain is most malleable in early childhood. This is commonly referred to as a window of opportunity or critical period of learning. This policy can provide students with an opportunity to learn a third language when their brains are capable of absorbing it quickly. And secondly, learning a third language develops different parts of the brain, increasing the capability of a student's aptitude. Beginning to learn a language triggers curiosity and potential to learn more. Research, researchers researchers <laughs> from, <laughs> from University College London studied the brains of 105 people, 80 of whom which were um, um, who knew more than one language. They found out that learning other languages altered brain matter, which is the area of the brain which processes information. What's the information? Yes. Um, does the statistics include the children, or is it purely on the adults? Um, we, uh, the experiment was conducted on the adults, and then the adults were asked when, what, at what age they started learning the language, and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah. And in this, so we fa they found out that learning other languages can alter gray matter. So scientists already know that the brain has the ability to change its structure as a result of stimulation, and this stimulation, in this case, will be learning a third language. Um, now scientists even say increase your brain power by learning a language. So now we so we know how effective learning a language is in increasing the aptitude of your brain. Our policy has the potential to present children with skills that can be of so much help to them in the long run. This policy has so much potential to do great things to the future of the nation. Thank you.
Okay, uh, John Gunn is the first speaker for the opposition side. Let's give him a welcome again. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Our opposition side strongly asserts that we stick with the status quo with a few enhancements in English education. Uh, as the first speaker, I will first uh, mention about, uh, I'll, I'll mention the rebuttals for the pro side, and then our side, and I'll speak about the first and second arguments, which are that there's no need and that the pro's plan lacks um, practicality. Now, our second speaker, Meng Jian, will state our third argument. And our last but not least speaker, Jack Huang, will summarize our debate and persuade, um, ladies and gentlemen, why this policy has definitely failed. Um, now, the, prop the proposition has stated that the prop um, it is scientifically right to learn uh, from first grade, but they have not stated the need and the practicality and benefit. Also, um, they have said that um, when, they when students learn from the first grade, that they'll um, learn uh, more quicker and more better. But we have to remember that um, in the first grade that they will not um, know the Korean language too. Um, that they will not be masters in Korean language. So thank you. Um, our side has three strong arguments and I will elaborate on two. First is our need. I asked the prof side, who will need this policy? Is this urgent? Now students actually do not need uh, uh, needed because students are already learning English in school, which is required. Now, uh, according to the 2005 March 7th edition of Newsweek, which is a weekly magazine, uh, it, it stated that in 10 years, 20 billion um, uh, people around the world are going to uh, learn English, and which will lead to uh, half of the whole world's population using English. Now, what this implies is that if students learn English and master the language, they'll feel no need to learn another language to come in communicate and, um, and getting the better jobs and pays. Instead of learning another language, it would be better, much, much, much better to learn, uh, master English and instead of learning bits of this and that of other languages. Now it also means that with about half the world population learning English, it will rank itself as the most um, spoken language in the world and therefore not require any more languages um, to be mandatory to learn. Now, um, through this, we can see that this policy uh, is not needed urgently and it's not, ne it's not needed. Uh, rather, it would be more urgent to enhance the uh, education of English right now if the primary goal of the pros plan, sorry, of the pros plan is, to do, is to do what is best for the students. Now, secondly, the practicality. Members of the pro side, do you think that the, this, practicality is, uh, this policy is practical? By enacting this policy, students will become more competitive than the present edu education state. Um, th the goal, the finish line is that learning a third uh, language is to prepare students in getting jobs and higher pay and to communicate. But however, by requiring all students to learn a third language, um, they will, all students will have a head start in the, in the starting of the race with nobody having a privilege. Yes, sir. Um, don't you think that if we learn something more, like? as like the third language we're talking about in this debate, would that make more opportunities to have jobs? But in, like, even though they have competitions? Okay, bye. Okay. But uh, if everyone learns a third language, and then their goal, there's a, so let's say it's a race, they're gonna go to the finish line, but then they'll all start, the starting line will be, ex um, um, become shorter, and then everyone will move to, to a closer state. Because they all learn the same thing, and then they'll all, since it's required, everyone will be closer to the finish line. So it'll be more competitive. Um, look, look now, um, so nobody will have the privilege to learn a third language. In other words, the plan does not, um, does not only, does not satisfy the goal of this motion, but it also creates more competition of, among the students in learning. Now, this, um, this policy, uh, member of the audience and Judges, this policy cannot and will not be enacted because this half of the world will speak English in 10 years. And students will not feel the need to learn another language because they all already know English. Uh, also, students will become more competitive, which will cause much more problems. Now, audience, I beg you to not become persuaded by the, um, the pop side, and we should remember the need and the practicality of this policy. Too.
Research something totally wrong because they said that 20, in 10 years, 20 billion people will be learning English. 20 billion is um, like even over the world population right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like over time, three times the world population right now. How will the world population become? 20 billion, I mean, three times right now. <laughs> 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 oh, that's just a minor factor. Oh. First of all, and then they said that if all, if everyone, all the students in Korea learn the same thing in Korea, they'll, they'll just bring the goal in front of us, in front of them, and it'll be no use. But actually, it's become a globalized society, you know, community. And, um, see, uh, okay, Koreans are. The learning a third language makes them competitive in the international stage, not just inside Korea and getting jobs in there. Yes. Uh, we have mistaken 20 million. It was actually 2 million, and it will lead to half of the uh, population in the world. In okay, thank you. And then, <laughs> if it's 2 billion, there's still 1.3 billion people who speak Chinese in China. Can you actually just ignore that? No, thank you. Um, and, uh, no, no. and you said that why, why they, if they learn a third language since the grade one, how will they learn even their own language? Well, then why do they learn English? And they, and they will learn more hours of their own language compared to their third and second language. Sir. No. <laughs> no. And I'll, okay, and I'll continue more of why we have to learn a third language. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we live in a society where technology no. brings people closer together. We live in a society where the development in technology is bringing the future faster to us. We live in a society where cultures are getting globalized. We live in a society where people have to think and pe prepare beyond the present and the future. In order to do that, we need to learn other languages more than just English. America is not the hub or core of globalization. Everyone in Korea, well, maybe in the world, is on their way to mastering English already. America might be the ultimate power right now, but however, other countries are gaining power, such as China, the Europe Union, Japan, etc. Korea, as one of the top 15 trading countries, Interchange and intercommunication in the future between the growing countries is inevitable. Okay, globalization will bring us to our third reason. Learning another language indicates breaking a barrier with another population of people. In other words, learning a nation's language means learning that nation's culture. By making most Koreans fluent at more languages than just Korean and English, we will see Koreans expanding their horizons with a newfound absolute advantage. There will be Koreans branching out all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we need most in the new era of globalization. Our fourth and final reason on this motion, why we oppose this motion, is that learning more languages can give you a head start in the competitive international community. Now with barriers between countries breaking down, the world is leveling up and getting together. As the world becomes more and more competitive, knowing more languages can help us win among the couple of competition. Occupational options increase with the addition of second and third language skills. Learning a third language allows 
the deeper pleasure of travel to countries that speak the known language, thus creating potential for one to expand one's field of action to more and more countries. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the ability to give our children the skills to become successful members and leaders of our global community. We must not wait, waste this ability and realize our stupidity in the future and we'll get them then. We must grab this ability and give it to our children so we could feel proud about them in the future. These are a few of the reasons that make our policy so crucial. We strongly urge you to vote in favor of this motion. Thank you. from grade one in elementary school. Well, what the opposition side has already said was that they're not even good with their own language. When we are forcing these kids or requiring them to learn a language, no thank you sir. <laughs> what it means is that they should be sufficient enough to know, the, they should already know Korean language in order to learn another language. If you don't even know how to speak Korean, how can you even manage to learn English or any other language? And we're burdening these kids Think about it. In Korea, there are so many kids learning, starting to learn English from the age of age, age, <laughs> age four that they are already, they are already burdening themselves from learning, suffering from learning these other foreign languages. However, when we require it in schools, it means that we'll be putting more burden on these kids, and they will get all these languages mixed up. We don't want this happening. If the, what the proposition is stating is that we want to give them an advantage and later in their life, this should not be starting from grade one, and which proves that their policy is inefficient and lacks practicality. Second, they talked about how learning another language um, it helps grow our brains and other oh, thank you sir. What this, um, however, they can do that with English as well. Just because we learn another language does not mean that we are going to get significantly smarter. What is the significance of learning a third language when we can master and develop our skills in learning English? And also, there are so many other skills that we can learn. Hold on, sir. That language is not the only way to develop our, our brain. Yes, sir, what do you have to say? <laughs> um, don't you know that I mentioned that a lot of people are getting ma are mastering their English, and I'd like to ask why isn't our children right now getting confused with Korean and English if they're learning it at the same time? So what I'm saying is that when we start from, I have to keep saying this. <laughs> <laughs> young age where we are going to get confused. Don't you think that well, some of us know already a few more, more than two languages. Don't we sometimes get confused of what this word means in English or what this other one languages no. mean in French? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, sir. I just asked you. No, I'm asking one more. No, thank you, sir. <laughs> now moving on to the rebuttals that, of the second speaker. What he stated was that why learn English if we if they don't even know Korean this is exactly what I have to ask the proposition if they don't even know how to speak English yet why learn a third language it's going to even confuse <laughs> even more why do we want to burden them when we don't when we don't well, the purpose of proposition is to give them an advantage of learning knowing another language so they could do a better job than other people get better jobs and be the advantages in, in the international community. And second, they said other countries are becoming powerful, and through languages, they're going to learn 
the culture. However, it is it is partially true that they are going to learn the cu culture. However, just because just because these countries are getting powerful does not mean that we have to learn every language of a nation that becomes powerful. English is enough. English is already a global language that everyone uses, and it what and unless we go to their nation, we'll never know. We are all, we'll never understand about their culture. There are so many rebuttals, but let me go on with my case. Our third argument is that there is no benefit to learning and requiring students to learn a third language. Requiring here means force. When it comes to learning another language, because it is a foreign language, it, it is being, and we say that English, since English is being taught already, we define this as force. Well, there are three reasons. First, it, it, there is no benefit because it, it lacks, it restricts, it restricts the freedom of individual students to learn. Why require all students to learn a language when they believe that they want to enhance their language skills in le just learning English? As, as our speaker has stated before, English is already a global language that everyone knows how to speak. So why not make more use of this language instead of learning a third language? And secondly, it provides no real incentive for students to study. When we're being forced to study, even if we it was something of a subject that we really like to study, don't you think that we would be reluctant in learning so? If it goes into grades, that we have a pressure that we I'm have sorry, to be good at doing it? Well, this is exactly what the proposition is doing. You're giving these kids a more burden and giving only incentive of getting grades that will not hurt them. We don't want this happening if we want these kids to be able to go out into the society and continue using it even after they're not required to use learning this language. And lastly, <coughs> it's going to reveal the gap between the burden, I mean, um, gap between the rich and the poor because by requiring another language to be learned, it's going to mean that rich kids are probably going to go to other institutions, cram schools, to learn more and get an advantage over other kids. So all in all, because the because the proposition's plan lacks practic practicality, but not only that, but only disrespects the students' individual rights, the opposition begs you to oppose this motion. Thank you. stick with the status quo and they kept saying that we should master English we should develop English but however how will the status quo actually solve that problem of and how will the status quo so um it's saying that uh, the opposition is saying that the status quo actually develops and masters English for the stu Korean students but that's not the status quo so how um, what is the opposition like um, asking like requiring as mastering English and another uh, rebuttal is that um, it's uh, the opposition said that there is no need to learn a third language, and because uh, English is enough to get jobs later on, to go to colleges. But however, um, oh, so is the um, opposition saying that the purpose of education is just to get jobs, and um, that's just all, like just getting jobs is all. Like so, opposition. I thought that uh, yeah. So the. Uh, the true value of education is um, to be like pursuing deeper learning and deeper education. So, yeah, I thought that, um, yeah. Thank you. I think, was it Jisun? Yeah. Okay, Jisun. Oh. Okay. Okay, uh, I do understand that learning third language itself is going to help Korean students to branch out to the world and be competitive in the global war world. However, considering that not all students are going to go out to the global world, 
is it really needed to require, require all Korean students to learn third language? Do you really think that benefit of enacting this, this policy uh, really outweigh the cost, which will be enormous? Okay, thank you. My judges, I'll, my panel of judges, I'll remind you, um, again, we have to ignore those speeches for the purposes of judging. Uh, so we don't have to ignore how nice they were, very good. Um, Hong Jae-kyun is the yes. final speaker for the opposition Jack side. Jaquan. Let's give him a welcome. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to be summarizing uh, what the proposition and the opposition, what kind of arguments we've raised, and uh, I'm going to be doing a few rebuttals, and then I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up. Alright, so the proposition started out by saying that learning a third language from a young age is uh, necessary. Well, it's beneficial because, because uh, kids learn better when they're young because and when they, when they learn a language, it increases the ability of their brains and, and therefore their aptitude. Well, what I want to say is that how do you know if, if, and you also said that kids are usually more excited to learn new stuff when they're young. But how, do you, how can you prove this? How do you know if they're more excited to learn a third language? And also, what I want to, sure, okay. Are you, um, is the speaker aware of this? <laughs> and um, also, you said if. <laughs> oh, is the speaker aware of the fact that I mentioned that, um, that researchers have shown that they will increase aptitude and that um, it will. Uh, right, but that wasn't. Enthusiastic. And I even mentioned the college name that this research was conducted in and the statistics itself. So, did the research say that the kids will be more enthusiastic if, if they start learning it from a young age? Yes. Sorry, it's not back and Okay, all right, well. Moving on. Uh, what I also wanted to say is that uh, the proposition has said when kids start learning a third language from, from a young age, it, it's better because they can learn better. But look, after nine years of compulsory English education, how well do you, how well do you think Korean students speak English in general? Let's be honest here. After taking all those years of English education, not not the majority of us. Are, well, not us in, in Taiwan Wego, but the, our friends who go to just normal Korean schools, they're not really fluent in, in English. And see, this is, this is what's sad about the, uh, the, the education that we're giving to the students, but we also have to admit that it's true. And, we're, and the opposition thinks that the same kind of thing will happen if we, if we, if we teach them a third language. And also, the next thing they pointed out was that when we teach uh, Korean students a third language, it makes them more competitive at an uh, international level. And by this, we assume that uh, by if, if they learn a third language, they will be uh, more likely to be employed in other countries. And you know, as they said, Koreans will be branched out all everywhere in the world. Well, this isn't very um, realistic because. <laughs> After all those years of learning a third language, we still do not believe that they will be cap they will be capable of speaking the language fluently enough to be able to work and live in those countries. And right, okay. Um, and also, it, they also said that teaching a third language fits the tech trend of globalization, and that we should not only focus on learning English but also on learning. Um, a, a, a different language and I want to say globalization of course requires us to understand the other countries cultures but it doesn't mean that we have to learn the language and you know take take the time and effort to learn the language of all these other countries because globalization doesn't mean that the world becomes like uh, one big country it, we also we still have our own customs and our own language and it's necessary that we keep them um, the okay, so our our side has said there's no need to 
there is absolutely no urgent need. Ur it's not urgent that we, we learn a third language as uh, English is all, all already established as uh, international language, and not everyone speaks it fluently still. So we have to we have to work on um, we have to work on making them master English and. Hello, everybody. Oh, oh. Sir, uh, Mr. Mr. Park Jr. Yes. is uh, our final speaker. Uh, about the opposition's time, opp opposition's teams. Uh, oh, really, very quickly. First, they so first students already have too much pressure in school. This is just opening up another class. For every class, there are students who do well, and there are students who slack, slack up. Whether you think about a new third language class as stressful and burdensome solely depends on your mindset. For example, when Daewon GLP students found out that, they, that all the Korean subject classes were going into their GPA, they, it, and they knew it and choose to cope with it. Requiring another subject is just another class requirement. We're making for the good of the students themselves, whether it is just seen as another stressful subject or not depend on the students. And next, please. And... Sir. Oh, no, don't pay. And the opposition team mentioned about that the young kids will um, be complex themselves in themselves about they don't even know Korean. But however, we grow up in the society we always talk Korean in uh, and in our family we talk we have conversations by Korean. Why would that be complicated? Eight years. We are not that dumb. We can perceive Korean as much as that. And Sir. no, thank you. And the opposition keeps on contradicting themselves by saying that everyone knows the language well and says that they don't know it well and they should. And another point, the opposition team is, has been surging that we, we don't need to travel around. Well, why should we limit ourselves into Korea? Why, why don't we just like... Um, We should not re we should not restrict our future um, possibilities and learn third languages and. Sir. No. 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 And oh, okay. Learning third language and yes, sir. <laughs> 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 the reason we said we limited it to Korea because it says in the motion. It's just... No. You're contradicting yourself again. <laughs> um, learning third language provides lifelong benefits. O occupational options increase with the addition of the second and third language skills. Allows for a deeper pleasure of travel to countries that speak the known language. And I wanted to speak out that uh, it differs from people to people in the finish line. Like Mr. Shim said that there is this finish line concept that there then about this finish line concept. But I think this is a wrong simile because learning the third language will just like enhance the expand the goal that we can get in through, and that will help us get more. That will be a uh, very like good merit for us. And they say it's not important to learn third language. However, it is hardly it is hardly known that countries have great self-esteem in their countries, and within them they would not like to be talked in English. For example, Frenchmen say that they don't even answer like a very uh, simple direction if they were asked in French. So we and 
if we wanted to learn more about the countries and the culture of the other Sir? countries, we should, yeah, we should know how to, <laughs> we should know how to like understand, co understand with each other on that. And our points were that early, and our policies were early childhood is psychologically the best time to learn a second or third language, as we shown in the scientifically, and, and, Mr. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.